FPL, give me 10 team selection. What is up everyone, how's it going? FPL Era here and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. After a poor start to the wildcard in Game Week 8, the patience paid off with a good return in Game Week 9 and I'll be eyeing up another green arrow this weekend. I've got two free transfers to use ahead of the Game Week 10 deadline, so in today's video I'm going to show you how to fit out in Game Week 9 and we'll also be looking at my transfer plans and team selection ahead of the Game Week 10 deadline. We've lots to discuss, let's get into the video. So before we get into today's video, a quick reminder, as always, to give the video a like, and let's hit a like goal of 80 likes on this video. So head on down there, drop the video a like, and if you are watching this and you're not subscribed, or if this is the first time coming across the channel, first off, welcome to the channel, but you know what to do. Head on down there, click subscribe, turn on those notifications. We're trying to hit 7k subs before Christmas. We're just under 170 subs off hitting this milestone, and with your support, we can definitely get over the line in time for Christmas. Right then, a quick look back to the Game Week 9 review. I scored 69 points at the Game Week, which is a good return for the team. Let's start off with Chris Wood on Friday evening. He started the Game Week off to Flyer when he picked himself up two goals and all three bonus points for a 13-point haul away to Leicester. If you've been following my channel all season, I have a Chris Wood in the team since Game Week 1. It's been a joy to own all season and he won't be leaving my team anytime soon. Going through the rest of the team, Cole Palmer and Brian Embuemo were the stars of the Game Week. Palmer scoring the winner at home to Newcastle and he picked himself up all three bonus points for a 10 point return. He was slightly unlucky not to have got any more returns in that game. He had a lovely pass for the opener. He assisted the assister and what a pass that was. And he also had a goal ruled out for offside in the first couple of minutes when he was just offside. And Chelsea also had a penalty overturned by Vera in the last minute. So he probably easily could have came away with more returns, but I was very much happy with that 10 point return. Brian and Buemo made it eight goals in nine games when he picked up two goals away to Ipswich, one from the penalty spot and one probably very fortunate cross come shot that was the winner for Brentford to break those Ipswich hearts, especially when they were down to 10 men. But a 15 point return from Buemo, his second double digit return of the season. And so some great returns from him and Palmer in midfield. They were the stars of the game week, but the return of the game week was definitely that 8 nori goal in the last couple of minutes when he got one back for Wolves in that Wolves-Brighton game. I was cursed his name in the first half after conceding twice and picking up a yellow card. He was on for no points. And then I saw his name flash up on live score to see him score. It was absolutely unreal. If you watched my video last week, I spoke a lot about bringing him in on wild card. He is on four yellow cards at the moment, so going to have to proceed with caution. If he picks up a yellow card, he's obviously going to get banned for one game. Yeah, hopefully he can stay away from the yellow cards and continue with those attacking returns. Moving on to the Eddie Had with three City players involved in that Southampton game. Enrico Lewis, Phil Ford and Erling Haaland all named in the starting 11. There's some high expectations of some big returns against one of the worst defences in the league. Erling Haaland got his goal early on with four shots on target, three big chances missed and an XG of 2.17. I'm still not sure how he only came away with six points, 12 points from the Ironman. But I was glad that I kept the triple captaincy chip for later on the season. If he did go with it, unfortunately, it was a poor return. Six points is a very disappointing return, but he definitely should have had a haul, all things considered. I was glad to see Rico Lewis get me his first defensive return of the season. Only Man City's second clean sheet of the season. And then looking at Phil Foden, I took a risk bringing him in on the wildcard last week. He didn't start against Wolves. Fair enough, he got that assist late on. But I brought him in on the basis of this game. And to see him blank was extremely frustrating. The fact he's not even nailed in the Man City squad is giving me a bit of a headache ahead of this weekend. And I've got decisions to make what to do with him. Another player who's given me a massive headache is Dominic Solanke. Another blank, two blanks in his last two games since I brought him in on the wild card. So I've got some major decisions what to do with him ahead of game week 10. Going through the rest of the team then, unfortunately, Arsenal conceded twice. At home to Liverpool, Gabriel picked up a slight injury as well. So he's a big doubt for the weekend then as well. And then unfortunately, Morgan Rodgers couldn't make it past 60 minutes. So he picked up a blank and only came away with one point. All in all, 69 points was a good return for the team. I've now moved up to 821k overall. Fingers crossed for another green arrow in game week 10 but let's move on now and have a look at my transfer plans ahead of this week's deadline so looking ahead to game week 10 here's how the team is currently shaping up no transfers to use as of now i do have two free transfers to use and i could be pushing to use in at least one of them with some slight issues throughout my team at the time of this recording also the afl cup games are still ongoing it's good to see cole palmer not playing any minutes as of now it's also good to see morgan rogers left out of the villa squad completely especially after his hauled off early at the weekend so it's good to see him get a full rest during the midweek games what isn't good to see though is Solanke, rico lewis and phil foden all starting in that man city against spurs game tonight Especially the double up on the City players. I'm not that confident of a, of a start for at least one of Foden or Rico Lewis now at the weekend. Rico Lewis might be alright seeing as a Kanji got injured in the warm up. But I'm not very confident at all on Foden starting. So some decisions to be made there whether or not to keep Foden. It's a nice fixture for City. But I can't be, I can't be leaving Foden in the team especially at his price tag. Especially with him not being nailed in that City lineup. 
Then also with injuries, then Chris Wood is a slight doubt. Gabrielle is a slight doubt, but the news is positive on the Gabrielle injury. We'll just have to wait for our Ted's uh, presser on Friday. What is good though, I do have some cover on the bench. Davies of Ipswich has a good fixture at home to Leicester, so I can sub him into the team if needed then also. That's how we're currently shaping up. Two free transfers to use. And let's move on and have a look at my transfer plans ahead of the Game Week 10 deadline. So before we get into my own transfer plans, the big topic in the FPL community this week is whether or not we should be transferring Erling Haaland out of our teams with him out of form over the last couple of weeks. Only one goal in his last four games. He's definitely not living up to his 15.4 million price tag and the injuries to Kevin De Bruyne and Rodri are definitely affecting his FPL returns. With Erling Haaland out of form and the premium midfielder assets in Mo Salah, Cole Palmer and Bakayo Saka all performing well over the last few weeks and even the cheap forwards Nick Jackson, Cunha, Danny Welbeck, Vod and Vissa all outperforming Haaland, it raises the question, if you don't have one of those premium midfielder assets in Bakayo Saka, Cole Palmer or Mo Salah, should you be taking out Haaland to fund one of those midfielders? I think if you are considering taking out Erling Haaland, you need to shift your focus towards your captaincy picks over the next few weeks. If you are looking at bringing in Cole Palmer or Bakayo Saka, they play each other over the next few game weeks, so I don't think you'll be captain one of those players in that game. But when you look at Mo Salah, he's up against Brighton this weekend, arguably the best captaincy pick this weekend. Then at home to Aston Villa, who are conceding for fun, and then up away to Southampton the week after that. So three very favourable fixtures for Liverpool. So if you are considering taking out Erling Haaland and bringing in Mo Salah for free, I'll emphasise on the free. I don't see much wrong with that. Looking at my own plans or what's my own thoughts on getting rid of Haaland out of my team, I definitely won't be doing this. And all I can tell you is proceed with caution. We all know how good of an asset Erling Haaland is in the game. And any given day, he can easily come away with a haul. If you look at his opponents over the next few game weeks, Bournemouth away this weekend, full rest during the midweek games. He didn't play any minutes in the EFL Cup game last night. So so I wouldn't be surprised to see him get a few returns this weekend. Then he's got Brighton in game week 11. Brighton will potentially be missing Lewis Stone through injury. And then Spurs at home in game week 12. Van de Ven was subbed off with a hamstring injury last night. So he's probably going to miss out on that City clash in game week 12. Which further increases the chances of a Haaland Hall in that game. So I'm to do with Haaland. If you are looking to bring in Salah for free. Emphasise the free. I don't see too much wrong with it. Especially if you are going to captain Salah over the next couple of weeks. And hedge your bets on Haaland. If you are looking to bring in or take out Haaland for a hit. Definitely wouldn't do this, especially with those run of fixtures over the next few game weeks. Fair enough, they're not the most ideal on paper, but when you look closer at those injuries for Brighton and Dunk and Spurs for Van de Ven, I wouldn't be surprised to see Haaland get some nice returns over the next few games. So look at my transfer plans ahead of the weekend's games. I have two free transfers to use, and I've got a few options. And the first option is to go with three transfers, take a minus four, and this would be in the purpose of getting in Mo Salah and keeping Haaland in the team. So looking at the three players, I'll be looking at taking out Gabriel, Phil Foden and Solanke. Starting off with Gabriel, he and himself in the Liverpool game last weekend. So he's a big doubt for the early kickoff against Newcastle on Saturday. We're going to have to keep a close eye on our Arteta's press conference on Friday. But we all know the way Arteta goes, he's probably not going to be helpful at all. So we're going to have to keep a close eye on the Arsenal for training picks. And fingers crossed we might see Gabriel in them. If we don't, I'm going to be very much pushed into making these moves. On to Solanke then, he's been very much a disappointment since bringing him into the wild card. Two blanks in his last two and he even blanked in that EFL Cup game last night and looking at Phil Foden he had a bit of a shocker in that game also hauled off after 58 minutes he couldn't make an impact in that false nine roll for City was fairly set on making these moves last night until a couple of minutes later Savino was stretched off in that City game so that with, with that injury to Savino it probably increases Phil Foden's chances of starting on the wing at the weekend and Bernardo Silva and Gundogan can move centrally Bit of a headache, I know, but we're going to have to wait and see what Pep says on those injuries on Friday as well. But then I'll be looking at bringing in Cunha. I know you can't see him, my body and my head is in the way, but that's Mikalenko of Everton and then Mo Salah. The main purpose of these three transfers is getting Salah into the team. And if I do bring in Salah into the team, I will be giving him the armband this weekend. Looking at my second option, it'll just be using one transfer, taking out Solanke and bringing in Cunha. Solanke is very much out of form, only three shots in his last four games. Not ideal for the Spurs man up front. Then bringing in Cunha, he's, he's not in bad form. Two goals in his last three games, and it's also the start of Wolves. Fable fixture run up until game week 17. And he's got Crystal Palace and Southampton at home over the next two game weeks. I'm expecting some good returns for Cunha over these games. Just a note on Cunha, Wolves did have an open training session on Monday. And Cunha dropped out during the middle of that training session. And he was seen on the bench with some ice packs around his knee. I do think he'll be fine for the weekend. But if you can at all, probably save your transfers until the press conference on Friday. And let's see if Gary O'Neill gives us an update on Cunha. But mine up him for the transfer in this week. So there's my options regarding my transfer plans this week. But I am going to have to wait until Arteta's press conference on Friday for an update on Gabrielle's injury. If Gabrielle looks likely to miss this weekend, I'll be going for that minus four hit and bringing in Mo Salah and giving him the Ironman this week over Erling Haaland. 
If you've made it to the end of this video, please give it a like, drop a comment below, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's hit a like goal of 80 likes on this video, so head on down there, give the video a like, and if you are watching this and you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Head on down there, click subscribe. We're trying to hit 7k subs before Christmas. We're just under 170 subs off hitting this milestone, and with your help, we can definitely get over the line in time for Christmas. I'll see you all on Saturday afternoon for Gaming 10 Deadline Stream. Thanks for watching. Best luck for the week. We'll see you in the next video.